Concerning the tips and tricks, I would like to talk about some absolute do's during the job interview and about some don'ts, which I see quite often but should be avoidable once you know about them. Let's talk about the do's first. To give you a tip right away, summarize the case question in your own words after the interviewer has described the initial situation. That way you can avoid misunderstandings and demonstrate to the interviewer that you have understood the case and know what it's about. Write down any information you get from the interviewer. It happens quite often that information appears irrelevant in the beginning, but becomes very important for the final solution. You should have that information at hand then. Also, ask additional questions to make sure you have understood the case. All our interviewers will be glad to answer your questions and to help you. Once everything is clarified, take a minute or two to structure your case. Let the interviewer know that you would like to organize your thoughts to come up with a structure. Every interviewer will be happy to give you time so you can be successful with a well-structured case. Either you or the interviewer will decide when time is over and you should start solving the case. That is, what have you been thinking about in the last one or two minutes? Let the interviewer know how you would like to approach the case and give him the opportunity to intervene early on if you might be on the wrong track. Of course, there are always many ways to solve a case. But we want you to be successful during the interview and will try to push you into the most feasible direction. Therefore, make sure you guide the interviewer throughout the entire case. If you use a flip chart or draw your structure on a piece of paper, it will make it easier for us to understand you and give you important hints. At some point during the case, there will be calculations. You will have to do them. Here it is important that you work accurately but also quickly. Don't worry if you make a mistake, but make sure you validate your results all the time before presenting them. Apply some sanity checks and consistency checks, clear your thoughts and then present your solution. Also, summarize your interim results and put them into context. Where are we right now? What have we already figured out? How are we going to proceed? I really enjoy when a candidate surprises me with out-of-the-box ideas as well. There is one point I would like to additionally emphasize. During a case interview, it is totally clear that time is limited. A case usually lasts for about 45 or 50 minutes, depending a bit on the uh, type of application process you are going through. So whenever you develop a possible solution, Keep in mind that that solution must eventually lead to a result within a given time frame. So if your solution or approach indicates a very complicated matrix uh, calculation, for example, which you won't be able to solve during the given time, you should directly talk about it with the interviewer and think about a different approach. Maybe there is uh, a shortcut that will lead to the same result in a shorter time frame. I would compare it a bit with uh, arithmetic problems back at school. Oftentimes, you might remember when you read the assignments, uh, it appeared very complicated in the beginning and impossible to solve in the given time frame. But you somehow knew that there must be an approach that uh, enables you to solve the problem within the given time frame. Keep that in mind when solving a case and talk to your interviewer about finding a shorter and more efficient solution. Now, I would like to talk about the don'ts, so things you should avoid. Please don't take assumptions without explaining them. It is no problem and you're actually encouraged to take assumptions in general, but for the interviewer it should be uh, comprehensible where these assumptions come from. For example, when you use population figures, it should be clear that you didn't just make them up. Demonstrate plausibly where these numbers come from. You also shouldn't be drawing hasty conclusion. Even if it seems like product A generates very high revenues and therefore should be focused on, in the end, it can still be a product B that leads to a solution. Therefore, don't draw hasty conclusions. This also applies for your whole career in consulting, actually. Don't get lost in your own details. It is important to keep the initial problem in mind and focus on the big picture. Write it down and highlight it in your notes so you won't lose sight of it. If you get lost in details, you won't be able to find the right solution in a given time 
and it will be hard for the interviewer to get you back on the right path. When you're looking for the right approach, it is also not helpful to think too much in casebook solutions. Most likely some of you will have read a casebook to prepare for the interviews. That's totally fine and makes sense to get the right mindset on how to structure a case. But usually the cases in interviews are based on real projects. You can't solve these with solutions from books. So it's appreciated when you use an individually adapted solution or structure, which can be based on a book whatsoever. But don't follow it too closely. Come up with the right structure for the case that the interviewer has prepared for you. If a small calculation mistake happens, that's no problem. We are all humans and we know we are all nervous at times and uh, usually you are during a job interview. Just avoid getting more nervous and making more mistakes as you go. You're invited to the interview because you have convinced us with your academic and practical achievements. We know that you are able to calculate. You should also avoid talking right away without any introduction or structure. The interviewer should always be aware of what part of the case you are talking about. Often, cases also include brainstorming. Here you can get creative and the point is to come up with as many alternatives as possible. I have seen quite often that candidates get blocked and only come up with a limited number of approaches. So for the brainstorming as well, it is helpful to build some kind of structure. How can you cluster your ideas in groups of three or four? Once you focus on these areas, you will automatically come up with many more ideas. What you shouldn't do in any case, ignore our tips. I really cannot emphasize enough that we want you to succeed. You're supposed to convince during the interview. We give you hints and tips to get you on the right track. If we say something that is, uh, or we, if we say that something is re irrelevant, or we don't have information about it, we usually want to make sure that you are not focusing on that, but focusing on something else. And usually we don't want to get you confused, right? We are, we are here to help. Of course, it sometimes happens that you don't have these aspects in mind during the case interview. What helps you then? Observe the interviewer and establish an interpersonal relationship during the interview. That helps you to read the signals when the interviewer demonstrates with critical questions or looks that the solution is not going in the right direction. However, you should consider that the interview is very closely related to a real work situation in consulting. So it is possible that your counterpart is actually bluffing. Interpersonal observation might help you to detect that. 